Today we'll be taking a look at something that has massively increased my productivity since I purchased this a few weeks ago, and that's a Logitech MX Keys keyboard and mouse combo. Now you can pick these up separately as the MX Keys S keyboard and MX Master 3S mouse, but I decided to go for the combo pack as they are so well matched and would rather take advantage of the saving when buying both together. At the time of making this video, the MX Keys combo bundle comes in at £199 or $199, which includes the MX Keys S keyboard, MX Master 3S mouse and the MX Palm Rest. Individually, the keyboard is £129 or $129, the mouse is £99 or $99 and the Palm Rest £19 or $19. So a good £50 or $50 saving when buying the combo version of this. I have divided the video up using timestamps, so if you're only interested in one product then you can quickly skip to that section rather than watching the whole video through. I'll go through a quick unboxing, we'll take a look at the keyboard, then the mouse, go through some of the features, set up instructions and customization before giving a final verdict. First off, something to point out is that you can actually go for a slightly cheaper version of this keyboard by going for a dedicated PC version. But because I use both PC and Mac on an almost daily basis, I decided to go for the multi-version option that works on practically any operating system including PC, Mac, Linux, Chrome OS, iPad OS and Android. The real benefit of this version being that you can easily switch between devices at the push of a button, and I'll show this in more detail a bit later on. Ok, so let's take a look at the unboxing. This seems to be one of the most popular keyboard and mouse combos at the moment, especially amongst creators or people that spend a lot of time in front of their PC or Mac, and there's a good reason for that. So what do you get in the box? Once you've removed the outer sleeve, you get this black box, then inside you've got this smaller box which contains a USB 3 adapter that you can use instead of Bluetooth, along with a USB to USB-C charging cable and some instructions. The keyboard and mouse come individually wrapped and are well protected in what feels like some quality premium packaging. So we'll take a look at the keyboard first which has a very sleek grey and black theme to it and you can see why many Apple users go for this setup as it closely matches their space grey products in terms of colour. The MX Keys does carry some weight to it and I was quite surprised by how heavy it is but I see this as a positive as it stops the keyboard slipping around on your desk which you can get with some of the more budget friendly lightweight keyboards, and the weight only adds to that premium feel. Design wise, like I've already said, it's very sleek with nice rounded corners and a small logo at the top. Dimensions wise, it's pretty average size, giving a full size keyboard layout with numeric keypad, but with a minimal bezel around the edge so it doesn't feel bulky. In terms of sizing, just to give you a rough idea how big this is, it's 430mm wide by 130mm with a depth of around 20mm and weighing in at just over 800 grams, which is pretty heavy for a keyboard. You can see here on the keyboard that you have some keys that have a dual purpose, and this is so you can use Windows or Mac. For example, the Windows key on a PC is the Option key on a Mac, and Alt key on Windows is the Command key on a Mac. So if you use both systems regularly, like I do, you'll get used to this quite quickly, and this doesn't take away anything from the style or design of the keyboard, which you often see in other cross-platform keyboards, so I feel this cross-functionality has been done really well. Across the top of the keyboard you have the usual function keys, with screen and keyboard brightness options along with mute buttons for video calls and media controls for play, pause and speaker volume levels. The three numbered keys between the main section of the keyboard and the numeric keypad are the profile buttons, and these are the buttons that allow you to quickly switch between devices without going through your device settings each time you want to change device. Just above the numeric keypad you have a dedicated calculator button which instantly opens a calculator on either your PC or Mac and a screen capture button allowing you to take quick screenshots or capture a screen recording. The keys are also really well designed with small dips in the keys to match the shape of your fingers making it much easier to type as you can feel where your fingers are all the time. The keys also feel really sturdy with the right amount of travel to make it comfortable to type for long periods of time, again adding to that premium feel. I also notice that while the keys do make a clicking noise, this isn't too loud to make it annoying and nowhere near as loud as some of the mechanical keyboards on the market today. 
The keyboard also feels like it is designed to be at the perfect typing angle, being tapered towards the front with this bar at the back, raising the rear of the keyboard. The bar is probably serving a dual purpose, to raise the angle of the keyboard, but also to house the battery, as this seems to be the heaviest part of the keyboard. The one downside to this keyboard is there's no height adjustment, although it does come with rubber feet to help grip to your desk, if unlike me, you don't use a desk pad. The MX Keys also comes with an impressive backlight, which looks really good at night, which you can see here. Like with most premium backlit keyboards, this turns on while in use, and after a few seconds, it turns off again to save battery. But something I've not seen before is this. The keyboard automatically detects your hand over the keyboard using some kind of motion detection and turns the backlight on. A really nice feature if you're into your tech. So what's the battery life like? Well, it's actually really good. When I first set this up almost a week ago, both the keyboard and mouse were charged to around 60% straight out of the box. And these are the current battery levels after some fairly heavy usage in my day-to-day -day work and testing for this video. Both the keyboard and mouse charge using this USB-C to USB Type-C cable, with Logitech quoting up to 10 days of battery life with backlighting on, and up to 5 months with it turned off. Charge time is up to 3 hours for a full charge when it's completely drained, but obviously much faster if you're just topping up. You can also save battery life when not in use by switching the keyboard off using the power switch next to the charging port. Now onto the mouse, the MX Master 3S. So again, as with the keyboard, we have this well ergonomically designed product with the same two-tone colour scheme to match the MX Keys keyboard. Even though the mouse looks quite big and bulky, it fits really well in your hand and for me it is a perfect size for a productivity mouse. The main body of the mouse has a rubberized coating making it easy to grip and then you have your usual left and right mouse buttons, like you see on any mouse. But that's where the similarity ends, as what sets this mouse apart are the number of additional buttons and the ability to customise and set up in any way you like. First off, like I said, you have your traditional left and right mouse buttons, but you also have this additional button below the scroll wheel called a mode shift button, which I'll come on to soon. A thumb wheel, forward and back buttons, as well as a gesture button. So what's a mode shift button and what does it do? So this button actually controls the mode of the wheel from a mechanical precision wheel to a free spinning wheel. Logitech calls this mag speed electromagnetic scrolling, which they say is precise enough to stop on a single pixel but also quick enough to scroll a thousand lines of text or code per second, while at the same time being almost silent. The side wheel is a slightly different function, but is just as useful, allowing you to switch backwards and forwards between tabs on your web browser, and also allowing horizontal scrolling in applications such as Final Cut Pro, where you can quickly scroll through your timeline, which is something I'm finding I'm using every day. The two side buttons can again take you backwards and forwards through web pages, or be customised how you like. And finally, the gesture button, which isn't clearly a button at first glance, but sits just on the thumb rest, and this replicates some of the functions of a trackpad on a laptop, where you can control additional spaces on your desktop, or customise how you like. The mouse surface has kind of a rubberized feel to it, which makes it really comfortable to hold, and you can see a lot of thought has gone into the design process, and the comfort aspect of the MX Master 3S. Battery life, as with the MX Keys keyboard, is again really good. With Logitech quoting a one minute charge, will give you 3 hours of use, and a full charge giving 70 days or around 1600 hours of use. With both the keyboard and mouse supporting USB-C charging, they both charge fairly quickly, and can still be used while charging, so there's no need to plan when to charge your devices, reducing any downtime and interruption of your workflow. If you really want to maximise battery life on both these products, then you can always switch them off when not in use, rather than leaving them on standby, which will always use a small amount of power. So on to profiles, and this is the one thing that I think sets this apart from other keyboards and mice. The first thing to do to really get the best out of these two products is to download Logitech's software from their website, called Logi Options Plus, which is basically their key mapping and full customization software. Once you've installed the software, it will take you through the steps to pair both the keyboard and mouse. This can also be done through Bluetooth settings on your PC or Mac. First off, you'll see this welcome screen displaying your MX Master 3 mouse and MX Keys keyboard and their current battery levels. Clicking on the image of your mouse opens up a menu, allowing you not only to identify each button on the mouse, but also map specific tasks to these buttons using the menu on the left hand side, or even set the speed of the scroll wheels. Additionally, you can also customise based on the applications you have installed, whether that be video editing software, office applications, Zoom, and so on, 
with the customizable applications you have available to you being displayed in the top right hand corner of the screen. This is where you can also set up profiles for additional devices for easy switching. As you can see here, I have my MacBook Pro and iPad set up and I can use the three profile buttons on the keyboard or mouse to quickly switch device. Then with the keyboard options, I can fully map my function keys as smart action keys or shortcuts, adjust keyboard backlighting, and again set up my profiles for up to three devices. Both these products also have firmware updates, so it's always worth checking that everything's up to date and you're taking advantage of all the latest features. On to the one final thing that I haven't covered yet, and that's the wrist rest. This comes as part of the combo pack, and it's something I really didn't expect to use, but I found it really adds to the comfort of using the keyboard. It doesn't look like the comfiest wrist rest at first glance, but it does add that extra bit of comfort. And again, matches the look and design of the keyboard and mouse. So, my final thoughts. Is it expensive for a keyboard and mouse? Yes. But does it represent good value? Again, I would say absolutely. This might not be for everyone, but for anyone spending hours in front of a computer screen or wanting to increase their productivity, potentially across multiple devices, then this could be the one for you. And in my eyes, should definitely be looked at as a viable option for anyone looking at a keyboard and mouse upgrade. So, what do you think? Would you pay the premium for this setup? Leave your comments below and let me know what you think. And that's it, you've come to the end of the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. And please leave a like rating and consider subscribing as it really helps out the channel. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Until next time.